Good morning, this is Matthew Hegum. I am coming to you today from the studio at Arts On Site, one of my favorite places to be. Uh, and today I thought I'd share with you um, a little bit about the process of being an artist and particularly um, where ideas come from. And I, I'm sharing this with you today because, uh, you know, one of those sort of magical things about being an artist sometimes is that ideas come to you when you least expect it. And, and certainly it's something that evolves over time as you work within your creative process. But ultimately, I think for me at least, um, the seed gets planted somewhere and then it evolves uh, over time. And so, you know, and so I sort of share with this with you and just sort of follow along if you, if you must or want to. Um, you know, so I, I was walking to work or to work, <laughs> to work, yeah, at the studio um, this morning. And, you know, it was, you know, morning time is very hazy, but it's, you know, I'm oftentimes very open and very fresh. I like to, I like to think creatively in the morning. Um, so I was walking towards the train and these kids were walking by and then I kind of came around the corner. I live in Brooklyn um, and I was facing the sunset, or sorry, the sunrise. And the sky was this sort of beautiful color, pinks, blues, oranges, and, and you know, it was really stunning, but it sort of immediately uh, reminded me of the saying that comes from my childhood, um, which is, uh, red in the morning, sailors take warning. Red at night, sailors delight. Um, and this saying comes from, uh, from growing up with my dad's side of the family of which my grandmother had a boat and there and this saying sort of came up and we would think about well what is the weather going to be like tomorrow um or, or sorry not tomorrow the next day or sorry today the end, like what does the day look like right um so it was sort of a a, a a moment right check okay so then i'm going into the subway and and that idea starts to sit with me and then i and i start to think a little bit more just about the sky and how beautiful it is and how um, as a dancer, you know, the space is all around you and part of what you do is you bring in space, right? You bring in the physicality, you bring in the um, textures, you bring in the emotions, you bring in the energy, you bring in um, the inspiration, whatever, you know, all these things are sort of the, you, you, you feed your senses um, visually and, and from the smell. So this information is, is sort of flowing through your body. And then I started to sort of think, okay, well, that's an interesting concept, consuming space, taking space. And we talk about it in dance. Um, certainly when we talk about how you exist physically. Um, and anyways, so I'm sort of thinking about this because I'm also uh, preparing for a site-specific uh, proposal. Um, ultimately, Left Side Labs, I think, is, is uh, working on some site-specific work this year anyways. Um, and so, so they, these things are sort of at the back of my mind. Well, how can you be in a physical space outside and receive the space around you and what does it do inside of you because what's interesting for me in this moment is that um, that very outside thing had a very <laughs> inside thing for me so the world shared this but I, I was the only one that had this sort of childhood flashback um, that, that, by the way, it comes with some sort of interesting associations just in terms of like, you know, being mindful of uh, danger, right, and, and the future. And, and so that's interesting um, because then it's sort of, uh, I'm sort of riding the train and listening to music and then I listen to um, Janis Joplin singing Summertime. Um, and I don't know, there's something about that song that's like really fascinating and the whole thing reminds me a little bit of my mother and of being a kid and, and growing up in the world of hippiedom, if you will, in some regard. Um, and, you know, and so, and so I'm sort of, again, being triggered, my childhood memories are being triggered because of a song, um, but it immediately takes me back into a, a space and time historically. And so, so, th so this is interesting to me because um, then that sort of opens up this, this range of possibility of, of, well, what can this idea be and what can this idea become? Um, and, and so then I start thinking about some other things, right? Um, the Bur I, for some reason, the Berlin Wall just like came to me because I realized, well, space is, is you know, there's something inspirational and inspiring about, for example, living in New York and being in this space 
there's also something uh, very caustic about it. Um, and, and right now, culturally, things seem to be extremely politically charged um, um, because of the whole Donald Trump thing and, and the parameters around that. But then even if you just sort of look across the globe, and I listen to a lot of um, um, international news, I listen to basically only international news, in, in all honesty, um, in, in some cases. Um, and so, and, so, and I'm, I'm like, obsessed in some way with with Germany and, and, and the language and I'm studying the culture and and so so this immediate image came to me of of how charged our ideas about space can be and how political spaces can be as well. Um, and so then this sort of you know creates this like fragmented image of childhood and memory and space and time and past and future and 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 you know, all of the associations that go with that, um, you know, and, and so I'm sitting here listening to more music and then, and then for some reason I get this idea of like a dance pole, um, right? Because it's like this idea that you physically have these objects that you carry with you, right? These are your memories of space um, that are embedded and they are triggered by space too. And, and, and some of them you can articulate like, you know, like this memory about um, red in the morning, sailors take warning, and some of them you can't maybe articulate, but because of, you know, the, the space, the energy just kind of puts you in a bad place or, um, or reminds you of something. And then the human brain is like fascinating, and this brings up all this que these like questions about the brain and neuroscience and, and how we exist in, in that sense, which is a whole other conversation. But anyway, so I kind of came up with this idea of these dance poles where it's like, okay, because for site-specific work, you know, I don't want to like install something and change the space. So I did have some, have some interesting ideas about how you could do that, um, like installation of, of space that's both the space itself, but then in a, a, then it blends with and creates new spaces. So anyway, but, but this idea of this, these dance poles where basically these are memories, external memories um, that are sort of concretized in images that the dancers carry around with them and, and then they're responding to that and, and sort of being in that dynamic within a performance, uh, sort of a defined performance space outside, right? So, um, so then that, that sort of brings up some questions about like the objects that we carry. And so I'm sitting here listening to music and, and trying to find more music to um, feed my inspiration. And, and then I listen to uh, Kaiser's Hideaway. And this is a, like a, a, a What's it like a house version of the song, um, more specifically, and and there's one moment in the song that just sort of came up, came on at this time, and it was like this build, 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 and then it, it literally dropped it like it's hot, um, and it happened at three minutes and thirty three seconds. Now, what's significant about three minutes and thirty three seconds is that I don't know what it is, but there's this, something about my biological clock where if I'm not well, I don't want to say if I'm not sleeping well. Yeah, sometimes maybe it's if I'm not sleeping well. Um, but if I, in essence, if I get up, right, there's this sort of thing that constantly happens where I get up at 3.33. And I don't know what that means. I don't know why it's always 3.33. And it's probably not always 3.33. It's just what, when I look at the clock, it says 3.33. So it's this thing that just keeps coming up. And so then to me, that was like, you know, I don't know, you can't, I mean, you can't prove that fate is a thing, you can't prove that destiny is a thing, perhaps, but but there is something quite quin coincidental, coincidental, <laughs> coincidental, about the fact that I was drawn to this moment of 333 and so so and that's like has this whole other thread of memory associated with it about well, what does that mean why is that happening is it related to stress is there is there something about that time that that 333 that like has meaning for me and I, I don't and maybe I'm just building my own meaning and which is cool too because we do that anyways um but then this is sort of where my brain goes and so then how does that you know um, uh, relate to me, okay, well, 3.33, I'm waking up, and so then I start to think about the fact that, oh, jeez, okay, that happens. I start to think about the fact that, like, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm in this, like, interesting transition right now in my life where I'm considering moving out of New York, and there's all these things going on, and some, most of all of them are, like, really awesome and exciting, and it's about movement and transition, um, and, and it's also about waking up. 
right? Waking up to who you are, waking up to being who you are fully, um, embracing that, appreciating that, um, and 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 again, sort of defining a, a, a different response to physical space. Because I think that's the other thing that's interesting too is like as as an artist doing site-specific work in particular, um, in this case, you have the opportunity to transform the space into something different so that the audience can experience in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a different way. And, and, and hopefully that that way is a way that um, can support something positive um, in the messaging. Uh, you know, maybe it's the theme that you're working with. Maybe it's just the feeling that you give the audience when they leave, knowing that, oh, wow, I've had a positive experience in this space. Space. And, and and that's powerful because I go back to what I said, like how this all began, right? Is is it began with this memory that I had in my childhood about about a perception that I had relative to what was happening in the physical space around me, the sun's the the sunrise and the meaning of the sunrise and what it what it um like what it felt like for me, what it meant for me, and on and on and on. So that's a, that's it. I mean, that's that's kind of how this thing will sort of came out. And um, let's see if there's anything else in my notes. I mentioned Janis Joplin. How does this you know? How does this come out from an eye? Okay, so sorry. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I mentioned everything. So um, so take that with you um, for what it's worth. I don't know if it's worth anything, but but um, you know that's sort of where an idea came from. Now I guess it's about sort of turning it into a dance. So <laughs> we'll see. Let me get let me get to work on that. All right. Bye.